Biden was elected to be Senator of Delaware in 1972 and he took his seat in 1973. He ran his campaign on withdrawal from Vietnam, the environment, healthcare, civil rights and general change. He became the sixth youngest senator in US history at the age of 30, the minimum age required to become a senator. Just prior to him taking his seat, his wife and one year old daughter were killed in a car accident while Christmas shopping. His two sons were also injured. Biden's racist policies began quickly in the Senate. Although he claimed to be friendly with his local African American community in Delaware, his policy showed an enormous lack of understanding of the issues black people faced in America. In the 1970s, in an attempt to remedy racial segregation, cities started to transport black students from cities into suburban schools and white students into inner city schools. Biden became very controversial as he was one of the program's fiercest opponents. This program was called Bussing. Biden called Bussing the atom bomb of anti-discrimination weapons and worked to stop it in his home state calling it the single most devastating issue that could occur to Delaware. In 1975, he put forward an anti-busing provision that barred the Department of Health, Education and Welfare from using federal funds to assign students or teachers by race. This broad language actually barred the department from taking anti-segregation actions beyond busing. The amendment Biden put forward was meant to be a softer alternative to the one put forward by Jesse Helms, Biden's well-known racist friend. The rhetoric was also racist. Biden claimed that legitimate desegregation was only supposed to end obvious racist segregation and that in some forms integration was actually racist and insulting. It is then not surprising Biden's policies started getting vocal support for anti-integration racists. Biden boasted in 1975 that he had made it respectable for long-standing liberals to raise questions with busing. The New York Times and Washington Post both labelled Biden's actions as a crumbling of the federal determination to achieve equal justice and said it was a real threat to the gains of the 60s and the decency of society. A coalition of civil rights organizations, including the NAACP, later sued over Biden's amendment. For some context, fellow presidential candidate Bernie Sanders was the president of his university's core chapter a decade earlier in 1963. He was also involved in civil rights action to end housing discrimination in both his university and the local area. Bernie is a year older than Biden. Even at the time, Biden's policies were unjustifiable to anyone wanting equality. Biden doubled down on this stance and a year later put forward another bill, barring federal judges from ordering busing unless they could prove that there was intentional discrimination going on. At the time, both pro and anti-busing groups said it was the most far-reaching anti-busing measure to receive serious consideration in the Senate. It was voted down in a close vote, but Biden believed it was shown that the Senate would help him kill the support of busing. Has Biden been apologetic for his clear racist policies? Not really. As late as 2007, Biden called busing a liberal train wreck. Biden continued his push of racist policies in the Senate in the coming decades, including waging war against drugs and crime and helping to create the mass incarceration that America now sees today. Biden spent the 1980s pushing tough on crime policies that seriously hurt minority communities. Biden worked with his described friend, Strom Thurmond, to pass several bills that fundamentally reshaped the American criminal justice system in the direction of mass incarceration. Thurmond was a Dixiecrat who had joined the Republican Party in response to the Johnson administration's civil rights bill in 1964. In opposition to a previous civil rights bill in 1957, he conducted the longest filibuster by a lone senator at 24 hours and 18 minutes. He never renounced being against integration. As the saying goes, a man is known by the company he keeps and the company Biden kept was often vile. At Furman's funeral, Biden eulogized him as a decent man. The pair, along with Senator Ted Kennedy, had worked on earlier unsuccessful proposals to raise maximum penalties, remove a directive requiring the US Sentencing Commission to take into account prison capacity, and created the cabinet level drug czar position. In 1984, they passed the Comprehensive Crime Control Act, which, among other things, abolished parole, imposed a less generous cap on good time sentence reductions, and allowed the Sentencing Commission to issue more punitive guidelines. In 1986, Biden voted for the Anti-Drug Abuse Act, which was voted down by Republicans, and he also voted for its 1988 iteration, which was passed due to a Democrat majority. The bill helped create a regime of harsh mandatory minimum sentences for drug possession and a racist 100 to 1 sentencing disparity between crack and powder cocaine. A death penalty was also imposed for crack related murders and it barred both drug dealers and users from getting government benefits 
an amendment Biden specifically voted for. Like many at the time, instead of trying to address the causes of drug usage and drug dealing, which is often poverty, Biden sought to demonize these groups. The war on drugs directly targeted minorities, meaning the policies Biden pushed and drove destroyed minority communities. In a speech in 1991, Biden would brag that it was under his and Furman's leadership that Congress passed a law sending anyone caught with a rock of cocaine the size of a quarter to jail for a minimum of five years. Biden here was gleefully bragging about destroying the lives of thousands of people, many who would have been addicts and junkies, but not criminals. This law obviously affected people of color more than any other group as seen across the long and misguided war on drugs. This disgusting speech was summed up by Biden taking credit for the legislative change allowing for the government to effectively rob anyone caught dealing drugs through the policy of civil asset forfeiture and demanded to know why the Bush administration hadn't sentenced more drug dealers to life in prison or death since Congress had given Bush that power. This is absolutely staggering for a Democratic candidate for president to have the record Biden does. He directly oversaw the creation of the war on drugs and prison state and unapologetically bragged about it. But it doesn't end here. Bush kicked off the 1990s by putting forward a crime bill based on his national drug control strategy, outlined in a speech in late 1989. Biden responded with a crime bill of his own. His bill was pretty similar, but included a ban on assault rifles and directed more government money towards drug treatment. However, by the time the Senate passed its version of the crime bill, which featured pushing the death penalty for a variety of non-violent crimes, Biden called it the toughest, most comprehensive crime bill in our history. However, the crime bill was not passed, no thanks to Biden. But a year later, Biden brought back old proposals for the bill, including increasing mandatory minimum sentences, limiting the number of appeals for prisoners, and allowing the use of illegally obtained evidence in court as long as the police had acted in good faith when breaking the law. When the bill passed the Senate in the summer of 1991, it expanded the death penalty to 51 crimes, restricted death row inmates' ability to appeal their executions, and increased penalties for a variety of offences, such as dealing drugs at a truck stop. The Wall Street Journal would label Biden the architect of the bill, and pointed out how he moved several times to end the debate on contentious issues. The NAACP and other groups lobbied against the bill, and in a letter to senators, the ACLU called the bill far worse from a civil liberties perspective than any that has ever been considered by the Senate. Many judges and lawyers warned the law would make the judicial system even more unequal and racist. The bill was ultimately killed. The GOP blocked it because the final version was not hard enough on restricting prisoners' abilities to appeal their executions, much to Biden's disbelief. Biden would continue to attack the lack of action by the GOP on their crime bill as he tried to position the Democrats as the ones who were tough on crime. It was the election of Bill Clinton which allowed Biden to get the chance to pass his crime bill. Senator Biden urged Clinton to take the initiative and up the ante and pledge more resources for police, prisons and drug treatments. The White House envisioned a comprehensive crime bill package that included increased penalties including the death penalty. The result was Clinton's infamous 1994 crime bill, signed with Biden clearly at his side. Today the bickering stops, the era of excuses is over, the law-abiding citizens of our country have made their voices heard. Never again should Washington put politics and party above law and order. From this day forward, let us put partisanship behind us and let us go forward, Democrats, Republicans, and independents, law enforcement, community leaders, ordinary citizens. Let us roll up our sleeves to roll back this awful tide of violence and reduce crime in our country. We have the tools now. Let us get about the business of using them. This bill implemented a free strikes mandatory life sentence for repeat offenders, something that has seen thousands going to prison for life for non-violent drug crime. It has overwhelmingly affected minorities and has contributed immensely to mass incarceration. Its near $10 billion funding was largely used for punitive measures, which included an expansion to death penalty offenses. Another part of the bill stripped Pell Grant funding for college education to prisoners 
even though education was a key tool to stop people reoffending. Clinton also championed the one strike you're out policy for evicting public housing tenants if they or their guests were involved in any criminal activity, making it much harder for people to find housing after jail which obviously contributes to those who will re-offend. The bill built on previous legislation Biden had endorsed and ramped up the rate of mass incarceration. The prison population has subsequently tripled as a result of the act, again disproportionately affecting poor minorities. Elizabeth Hinton, assistant professor of history and African American studies, says that Clinton and Biden knew these policies already disproportionately affected people of color, yet they choose to expand this very system and make it even worse. Biden stated the bill had achieved nearly every goal he had called for in his fifth report on US drug strategy. He bragged that he had convinced the liberal wing of the Democratic Party to now support 60 new death penalties and 70 enhanced penalties. In 2007, Biden would call the 1994 crime bill his greatest accomplishment. It is clear from his voting record and activity in the Senate that Biden was one of the key enablers and architects of many racist policies that went under the moniker of tough on crime. Instead of focusing on improving the quality of life of those living in poverty, Biden and his outwardly racist allies chose to punish those found with drugs, even marijuana. The result of Biden's actions is that hundreds of thousands of lives have been directly destroyed, disproportionately people of color. Many have received life sentences for non-violent drug crimes, and as such they cannot hope to climb out of the poverty they often come from. The crime bill has successfully propped up and expanded the private prison industry. As I have mentioned, it tripled the US prison population into the largest in the world. Is Biden a racist? I would argue he is. He has and is extremely ignorant of the issues that have been used to subjugate those of color. Not only is he ignorant, but he has arrogantly pushed some of the most destructive policies of the post-war period and pushed racist myths to achieve these ends. One only needs to look at his initial work in the Senate and his racist fight against integration with his anti-segregationist allies to see that Biden has always been a proponent of racist policies. Someone with a record this awful on race in America has no business being a candidate in this cycle's Democratic primary. No person who championed and celebrated his racist policies should be considered by any Democrat as a potential future president. His contemporary Bernie Sanders proves that Biden's tender years are absolutely no excuse for any of his past actions. The crime bill is the culmination of Biden's racist past, something that has been responsible for untold destruction of millions of lives in America.